hacia un destino de prosperidad, de crecimiento, de paz, de felicidad social. Thousands of people cheered as Venezuela's authoritarian president, Nicolas Maduro, claimed victory in the country's presidential election. But that result is being highly disputed. Opposition leaders say they won the election and the results are tainted. This controversy is being closely followed by leaders around the world, including the United States. Let's bring in CBS News correspondent Lilia Luciano. She is in Caracas, Venezuela. Lilia, set the stage for us. Why are these results being called into question? Well, Lindsay, there is a very long history of these kinds of challenges here in Venezuela. The last term uh, of Maduro, the last election where he uh, just is wrapping his second term, was considered illegitimate by multiple governments around the world. Uh, there is a history of protests uh, by the opposition when they challenged the results of uh, either elections for the presidency, uh, for the legislature, when the government has, tried, has changed the constitution, uh, when the government has, has, has uh, initiated uh, voting processes to secure more power within the government. In, in many, and if not in most of these, of these manifestations, uh, there have been people who have been in prison, charged, uh, many of them serving now, or living now in exile. Uh, there are concerns Concerns about intimidation. Yesterday, throughout the day of voting, we heard uh, reports of intimidation. And just now, the attorney general was talking about uh, 32 people who were arrested yesterday for destroying uh, voting materials. Without, we don't understand much of the context uh, of that, of exactly what those charges were. It was just announced. Uh, but basically, this is a very heated, a very charged environment when it comes uh, to elections. Uh, many uh, governments around the world, you know, consider this an authoritarian regime. Uh, freedom of speech is incredibly limited. The attorney general just now was talking about uh, warning people uh, about the repercussions that the people who would break the law in ways like block blocking streets would face the full force of the law. So within that context, uh, the, the government has the power over all five branches of government. There's a lot of doubt. The polls leading up to this election showed a huge uh, lead for the opposition party. And so because of that and because there hasn't been transparency and the opposition and the other parties have not seen the evidence of this victory that the government is claiming, there's still a lot of questions. I got a chance to talk to Maria Corina Machado, who's not the candidate, because as part of, you know, why these elections are being questioned, was banned from running, was banned from the ballot, and had to choose a proxy candidate uh, about why she's saying this election or these results that were published uh, or announced yesterday were illegitimate. This is what she had to say. It's a grotesque, grotesque violation of the popular will. And everybody knows it. The regime knows it. The international community knows it. And the people of Venezuela know it. And we will defend the truth. And we will not accept that, you know, uh, Trump, the regime puts uh, in front of us saying that if we want to defend the truth, it, it, that's violence on the country. Violence is what they have done. And Lindsay, look, I mean, the most important thing that she was telling me in a prior conversation yesterday is what she keeps telling governments across the region, and it's why we're here, why we're covering this story day after day, hour, hour after hour this week, is because this is an election that has everything to do with the biggest issue in our election, which is migration. Almost 8 million Venezuelans have left under the Maduro regime. We have met Venezuelans here who, telling, who are telling us we're here to vote, and if the government somehow remains in power, whether fairly or not, we are ready to leave to go to the United States. And those very migrants tell us, and so is every young person I know, there's no opportunity. They don't foresee that if Maduro holds on to power, there's going to be change, and so they're ready to migrate. Most will probably go to countries like Colombia, where most Venezuelan migrants are, or other countries in the region, but of course, a record-breaking number of them have arrived to the United States. And by the way, before uh, you let me go, they're also saying we want to get to the United States before Trump takes office because they feel like even you know, if Trump takes office, if Trump wins the election, they're not going to have a chance to get to the United States. So it's a very complicated political calculus between this election and our election in the United States that they're very well aware of. Lilia Luciano, thank you.